At the time of doing this video, I am 42 years old and damn, it feels like every single year keeps on getting better and better. For the past four decades, they have taught me a lot and that is exactly what this video is about. The seven things that I know at 42 that I wish I knew at 22 and these are the most powerful lessons that I've learned personally let's get into it. So the first lesson is to stop using your workouts to burn fat. Use them to build muscle and focus on getting stronger. So when people try to burn fat, they try to do tons of circuits, they try to do a lot of cardio in order to burn an ounce of fat off of their bodies when they should be focused on building muscle. Muscle is the most metabolically active tissue that you have on your body. The more of it that you have, the more fat you are actually going to be burning in your sleep. So stop trying to burn fat with your workouts. If you want to burn fat, do it by building more muscle inside the gym. Lesson number two is your mental health is affected by your physical health. When I was 22, I wasn't exercising. I was lazy. I was eating shit food and I wasn't getting the proper sleep that I needed. And this led me to being somewhat depressed, having negative thoughts, and just like having no purpose in life. So a couple of things you need to ask yourself when you are feeling not so ideal. The number one is going to be, what am I eating? What am I putting into my body? Am I exercising? How much sleep am I getting? So these don't supersede the need to get a therapist and to work on traumas or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying, you have to look at these three areas, nutrition, sleep, and exercise, and then see whether or not you are hitting these three areas or whether or not you're not hitting the mark on them. And this is gonna have a direct effect on how you think about yourself, your mood, and your overall energy. So before kind of like diagnosing yourself with anything, focus on these three, see exactly what effect it has on your mental health, work on those, and then you might be surprised at how much your mental health improves as a result. Number three is to forgive your parents. They did the best that they could with what they have been taught. I didn't have the best childhood, I'll be honest. I was a latchkey kid and I was getting raised by my brothers and my sisters. I was the youngest of uh, about four kids and our parents were just focused on survival. They were immigrants from the Philippines. Until you are a parent yourself, you will not understand how much shit your parents had to go through in order to not only keep food on your table, but also to raise however amount of kids are in your household. So each generation has a new set of tools that they get to work with. We, I'm saying my generation, knows more than the previous generation. And I can't fault my parents for not having the tools that I have learned. So when you become a parent, you know, it's on you to improve on to the next generation that you are raising and give some grace to your parents. They did the best they could with what they have been taught. Forgive them and allow yourself to move on. Number four, alcohol, drugs, and porn are ways we use to numb ourselves from the things that we don't want to face in life. In my 20s, I was binge drinking every single week. I was smoking weed every single day and I was addicted to porn. And as I slowly got rid of all of these crutches, what I realized is we use them to numb ourselves. Imagine this, you just broke your foot. You have to use crutches, you have to put the foot in a cast. What happens as a result is as the foot is healing, you're taking pressure off of it, you're walking with your crutches, everything's cool. At some point, the foot heals up and then you have to put pressure on it in order to strengthen the foot or else what happens? It's going to atrophy. Well, that's what happens when we use external forces and cheap dopamine to numb ourselves from this experience of life that we don't want to face up to. If we keep on numbing ourselves, what we're doing is we're atrophying the muscle and we are not going through the healing process in order to get over it and actually turn it into a strength. What we need to do is we need to get rid of these external forces, deal with our problems face to face, and we need to make sure that we do this because it's gonna lead to the greatest amount of maturity in the end. So face your demons and work on the parts that need to be healed and do it without the use of food, drugs, porn, or alcohol. Number five, make decisions for your future self. So every decision that you make is a vote for your future self. That is what James Clear said. This goes for the habits that you create, the people that you bring into your life, and whether or not you decide to play it safe or bet on yourself. So one thing I like to do is for smaller decisions, take a one year time frame. What am I gonna look like a year from now if I keep on doing this one action? And for bigger decisions, what I like to do is I like to take a 10 year time frame. So if I make this decision right now, where do you, where do I think I'm gonna be in about 10 
years? What actions can I take that my person from 10 years into the future is going to thank me for? So there are two big parts to life. Number one is regret minimization. We want to limit the amount of regrets that we have by the time we reach our deathbed. The other one is going to be delayed gratification. It is the number one predictor of success. So when you're making decisions right in the moment, always take a pause and ask yourself if this is the right decision for your future self. Number six, true wealth is holistic. You will not be wealthy if you have an unhealthy body and you will be piss poor if you neglect your family. So everyone thinks that wealth is about fancy cars, watches, and houses. It's much deeper than that. There is financial wealth and then there is wealth of life. And everyone talks about having to sacrifice something in order to thrive in another. And that is bullshit. Look at it more like spinning plates. Each plate needs enough momentum to spin on its own. Sometimes you have to go over there and then you have to spin them a little bit more so it catches momentum. And this is the process of spinning the areas of your life that actually matter to you. And if you do this enough times for your health, for your wealth, and for your family, what's gonna happen is, is that you're gonna have all of them spinning at the same time and all you gotta do is just give it one little spin in order to maintain momentum and then that is what it takes and every time that you spin it what you're doing is you're basically creating good habits the true sign of the wealthiest people i know are those that believe that they can have it all and go after it and when i say have it all i'm not talking about the houses or the watches or anything like that i'm talking about the things that matter which are the three pillars which are health wealth and relationships and here's the final one Everyone has their own timing. So you know those lists that say that by age 30, you gotta be this or that or whatever it is. Well, screw those lists. They are completely stupid. One of the worst things to do is to live your life by someone else's timeline. And I remember this when I was just like 24 years old. I was switching from going into corporate world, going to fitness, and I thought that I was way too late because all of my friends, I thought they had their lives all put together and I thought that they were already where they were supposed to be. And here I was starting again at 24 and I felt that way when I was 40 years old and going into something new, going into social media and starting that all over again. And here I am at 42 doing YouTube videos and really putting my effort into it for the first time. So let me tell you that everyone was telling me to do these things way earlier than when I was ready. And everyone has an idea for when you should be doing things, whether it's starting a business, getting married, whether it's having kids, whatever it is. And guess what? They are not living your life. They don't know when you are ready. It takes great courage to live life at your own pace. So we have to respect that everyone's got their own timing and I want you to honor your timing when it comes to life. So those are seven things that I know at 42 that I wish I knew at 22. And as you're watching this video, which one stood out to you the most? All I wanna do in these videos and future videos is just cut the amount of time that you need to learn everything that I've learned through helping thousands of people get their bodies in shape, through changing my own life and transforming my own results. All all I want you to do is to learn from, I guess you could say my mistakes and my lessons. As the saying goes, it takes a smart man to learn from his own mistakes and it takes a wise man to learn from the mistakes of others. So here's to you hoping that you learn from my lessons and cut the amount of time that you need in order to live a great and fulfilling life. So if you made it this far into the video, uh, please you know, like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. It would help me get in touch with more beautiful people like yourself. And I will see you next week with another video. Take care and have a good time.